The two-state solution left the station long time ago. You, Wada, you say that he died, it was never born. Let's be honest about it. It was never born. I believed in it for years. I was an advocate of the two-state solution when very few Israelis were advocating two-state solution. I thought it's a courageous idea, a wonderful idea. Two peoples share one land. Let's share the land between the two peoples. What is more just than this? The only thing I didn't know is that nobody in Israel means to go for it. Ever, 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 never, never, ever. There was not a single Israeli prime minister, not a single Israeli government who had an intention to go for the two-state solution. There was never an Israeli prime minister or Israeli government who had the slightest intention to put an end to the occupation. They had all kinds of tricks to gain time, to strengthen the occupation, to strengthen the settlements. The peak of it was obviously the Oslo Accords, which I supported. I remember, again, maybe I'm too emotional. I remember, I really thought, that's it. We reached a stage in which the way for peace and justice is open. But it was a trap. I know it only now. I didn't know it then. Only in order to gain time. Only in order to strengthen the occupation. How do I know? Because Oslo, even this courageous process which brought Nobel Peace Prize to some people, even this process didn't mention the core issue then, and this is the settlements. And when you don't touch the settlements, you have no intention to put an end to the occupation. And if you don't agree, first of all, to freeze this whole criminal project, and then to evacuate the settlements, there are no two states. You know, all those conditions. Listen to the language of those who support two-state solution or claim 